In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought. Welcome to our Sunday afternoon virtual lesson. So glad that we were able to spend this time together as we open up God's Word. If you will, go ahead and open up to Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. And let's begin reading at verse 37. Mark 8 and verse 37. And Jesus went out along with his disciples and came to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he was asking his disciples, saying to them, Who do people say that I am? And they told him, saying, John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, but others one of the prophets. And he continued questioning them, You, who do you say that I am? Peter answered and said to him, You are the Christ. And he warned them to tell no one about him. Peter. Peter is one of those heroes of faith, the one that I want to look at this evening. Hero, the one who stands up on the day of Pentecost and says, This Jesus, whom you have crucified, God has made both Lord and Christ. Peter, who was the first to, to convert a Gentile, Cornelius, to Christianity. Peter this hero of faith. You know, as I look at Peter and as I read Peter's story, I find myself identifying with Peter for, well, maybe all the wrong reasons. You see, like Peter, I can open up my mouth and, and insert my foot quicker than quick. Like Peter, I can step out in faith, but then I can be distracted by what's going on around me and, and forget but the strength that God provides. And like Peter, though, I realize deep down inside of me that I'm not worthy for Jesus to call me friend, but I really am glad that he does. I want us to learn from Peter. And I want us to learn some things that we can improve in our life. As we see some of Peter's struggles. But, but before we get there, I want you to imagine that, that I'm interviewing Peter, or maybe you're interviewing Peter. And you ask Peter a simple question. You ask Peter this question, Peter, what made you answer Jesus' question about who he is? Why did you say that he is the Christ? And Peter just automatically, not no thought behind it, says, where have you been? Ha haven't you seen everything that he does? Did, did you see that great catch of fish? Did you, did you see him walk on water? Uh, haven't you seen how, how, how people come to him, how the children love him? H have you listened to what he teaches? It's revolutionary. It's different from anything we've ever heard. He has to be the one we've been waiting for. The, the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, and the poor people, the poor people have the gospel and the kingdom preached to them. He has to be the Messiah. He has to be the deliverer our people have been waiting millennia for. Well, okay, Peter, that, that's a good answer, but I need some help here. What do you mean when you say that he is the Christ, that he is the deliverer? Well, he's the deliverer of our nation. He's the one that the prophets talked about. He will bring the surrounding nations, the Gentiles, to know the one true God. He will make our nation free when he is anointed king. And those of us who follow him will be part of his court, will be part of the inner circle. The world as we know it is about to change. Wait a minute. Peter? Are you saying that Jesus is going to to establish an earthly kingdom. And I would tell you, when, when Peter makes that confession that Jesus is the Christ, he may very well think that. Because in the book of Acts, after he has been, after Jesus has been raised from the dead, the apostles say, will you now restore the kingdom to Israel? They're still thinking a physical kingdom. Oh, if only Peter knew what we knew. If you only knew that, that Jesus' kingdom wasn't physical, that it was much more than that. But at this stage in his life that we're reading about now, 
he didn't know that. At this stage, he, he was still thinking a physical kingdom. Mark 14, verse 22, we begin reading. And while they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is the, my blood, the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And after they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, because it is written, I will strike down the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. But Peter said to him, Even though all may fall away, yet I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly, I say to you that today, this very night, before a rooster crows twice, you yourself will deny me three times. But Peter kept saying insistently, If I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they were all saying the same thing. Jesus takes the twelve into a special room to celebrate the Passover. He wanted to spend that last Passover with the ones he considered family. Jesus tells them afterwards that they're going to be scattered. Something's going to happen to him and, and they will forsake him. Peter speaks up, even if everybody else does, I won't. I'm there with you. I'm for you. I'm here 100%. I know who you are. I'll be right there with you. Peter means it. Peter means it. He knows himself. He knows what he believes. He knows his own resolve. And Jesus says, Peter, this very night, you'll deny me three times. Peter remains adamant, even adding, even if I have to die, I'm not going to deny you. Peter believed it. Peter believed the words that were coming out of his mouth. He meant them. And again, the others speak in agreement. Jesus is the Messiah, and they will die for him, and they will die with him. Peter even proves his resolve in the garden when they come to arrest Jesus, and Peter draws his sword and removes the ear of the servant of the high priest. He's committed to defend Jesus. But Peter is going to have to face his own weakness. He's going to deny even knowing Jesus and swear ignorance of who Jesus is. The same Peter that confessed that Jesus is the Christ will say, I don't know him. Let's pick up the story in Mark chapter 14, verse 66. And Peter was below in the courtyard, and one of the servant girls of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You are also with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you're talking about. And then he went away into the entryway. And when the servant girl saw him, she began once more to say to the bystanders, This is one of them. But again, he was denying it. After a little while, the bystanders were again saying to Peter, Surely you are one of them because you also are a Galilean. But he began to curse and to swear, I do not know this man you are talking about. And immediately a rooster crowed in a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said, Before a rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And throwing himself down, he began to cry. This lesson is about learning from Peter. I want to learn from Peter's mistake. It's easy to learn from successes. I think we need to learn from mistakes, not just our own, but the mistakes of others. And so as we glimpse Peter's weakness here, we can learn some lessons as we see what led to Peter's denial. There are three things that are complicit in Peter's denial of Jesus. Three things that I need to be aware of in my own journey. Three things that can lead us to deny Jesus, or at the very least, least to just act ashamed of him. The first one of those is pride. 
pride. Peter thought he was invincible. He thought he had arrived at the point of faith where nothing could shake him. He thought he knew what he was talking about. And he thought he knew what he was doing. He was self-reliant. I will never fall away. If I have to die with you, I still won't deny you. He looked to his own inner strength. And not to strength which God supplies. Pride. Scripture says pride goes before a fall. The second thing is fear. Fear. Peter was afraid. When they arrested Jesus and took him into trial, and knowing that that might lead to Jesus' death, Peter was afraid he might be next. And then he began to doubt himself and what he knew. Oh yes, he followed Jesus. He followed the mob. who was taking Jesus away. But he followed at a distance for fear he might be seen. He was afraid to go all the way in with Jesus, so he stops in the courtyard. There he's warming himself by the fire. This there, maybe he wants to listen to just kind of hear what's going on. Maybe he was afraid. Maybe he was afraid he had put his faith in the wrong person. You see, he was probably still looking for a physical kingdom, and Jesus is now arrested. If he could be arrested and possibly put to death, could he really be the Messiah? Fear. Fear destroyed Peter's hope. Fear strangled Peter's faith. So, so the first thing is pride. The second thing is fear. The, the third thing is our association or his associations. See, while in the courtyard, Peter was literally warming himself in the, by the fire of the enemy. He put himself into a compromising situation. He put himself in a situation where his faith would be tested. And he wasn't ready. When the accusations began to fly, Peter had no backup. He he was alone in the enemy's camp. He was unprepared to fight. There were too many of them, and it was too much for Peter, and he defaulted to self-protection. His pride was wounded. Fear stepped up as he was associating with the wrong crowd. And so he denies Jesus. Here's the lessons for us. Watch out for pride. Don't begin to think too highly of yourself and your own abilities and your own strength. Remember to just simply trust God and follow what He says in His Word. Not your own thoughts. Not your own desires, but what God wants. And when the tough times come, just step back, lean on God, and let Him help you walk through it. Watch out for pride. And then don't let fear paralyze you. As we saw with Would Gideon overcome fear with faith in God? Accept your role as a servant of God and make that your focus and all that that entails in your walk in this life. And know that when you are a servant of God, God is there with you now and eternally. Let faith conquer your fear. And then, be careful who you associate with. Remember, bad company corrupts good morals. The people around you will have an influence on your life. Surround yourself with people who will help you stand up for God. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for blessing us and caring for us. Father, when we, like Peter, let pride and fear and the crowd around us 
step back from you. Or maybe even deny you in our words or in our actions. Or, or be embarrassed of you, even if we don't do anything wrong, we're just embarrassed to stand up and say what's right. Father, when we do things like that, we understand, Peter. And Father, thank you. Thank you for letting us learn from Peter. Help us be like Peter and take responsibility and to have the integrity to say we're sorry. To own up to our weaknesses and then turn to you for strength. Father, thank you for the forgiveness, the grace that is in Jesus. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining me and allowing me to spend this time with you. As always, if you have questions, please reach out to me at the phone number and email at the end of this video. I'd be happy to talk with you. Until the next time we're together, my prayer is, as always, that God will bless your day. Me home, here in the power of